All righty, folks. So here's the deal. This is actually from uh, ongoing Titans League Gold League. All right. So it's the not the top 24, but the 24 after that. I have a lot to talk about with the players. However, I was not planning on casting this game. I was not planning on casting this series, but I was told this game is fantastic. So I was told. Map is Atacama. You've got water in the north, south, east, and west. There's a lot less fishing than, say, Cross or any other water map. And normally it's a fight for the wood. Might be a little bit of a fight for some llamas here. Because we do have the Grajaras for Kingston. And the Grajaras, new civilization. Everyone's saying they are busted. And they're all about placing the uh, their herdables inside of their mills here. So if you can steal some, just find yours as early as possible, the better it is for you. The downside I'd say on any water map, though, in theory... Is that if you make the mill right away, you won't have the lumber camp. And if you don't have the lumber camp, you're not going to be able to afford to dock. So, should even things out a little bit. Now, I don't know what's going to happen here. But my imagination is telling me a lot of Krepos dropping and Castle dropping. And a lot of YOLO plays from Sebastian. So, what is getting me so excited about Titans League is not only the main uh, league. But it's how many up-and-coming pros are finally getting like real opportunities... You know, there's hope for them. If they get top eight, they go up to the to the Platinum League. And then also, we're just getting to see these guys compete in a realistic format again and again and again. And Kingston, he's going to be in quite a few videos because of how good he's playing. A Mexican player on the younger side, 22 years old. He beat Daniel. Many people think Daniel's top 20. Beat him 2-1. Beat Overtaken. In Gold League as well in their group. And he beat Overtaken 2-1 uh, as well, I recall. So, uh, crazy results for him so far. Sebastian, bit in the younger side. I played both these guys on ladder. Sebastian, I would consider the underdog. But there's been a period where he just had aggressive build after aggressive build after aggressive build. So, I would expect something crazy here. In fact, if any player was going to just skip the water on this map, it would be Sebastian. I could see him going for man at arm tower and trying to deny all the wood here. Yeah, Sebastian from Uruguay. I don't think there's many Uruguayan players out there. And then Kingston from Mexico. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of players from both countries. I know there's quite a big uh, player base from Mexico, but in terms of high level players, these countries usually don't have a lot of representation. So Sebastian scouting already. Again, it's it's funny. I've been told this game is amazing, but I've been given no details. So I'm like, what what do I look for? What's it gonna be? And yeah, look, no dock. So we have a dockless Atacama. The docks are good for your your middle game, your mid feudal food eco, but they do ultimately slow down your feudal age time a little bit. There goes Kingston. And Kotkis, what's up? Welcome, welcome. By the way, this was game one in their set. I don't know what's happening in the rest of the set. Apparently, this is happening, and I can maybe link those results later. Um, Sebastian, trying to block off the deer. The deer's not cooperating, though. But yeah, the barracks should be coming up shortly. Whoops, sorry about that. I think we're going to see the barracks here for Sebastian. Seen the wood line. Oh, no, he hasn't, actually. Forgive me. Oh, he's looking. Sees it. And, okay, I believe Kingston knows what to expect. You should know what to expect. Bulgarians get the man-at-arm upgrade for free. So if you're up against the Bulgarians, surely you have to think it's going to be man-at-arms. Oh, he actually didn't have the resources to go up here, Sebastian. That's really bad. That slows things down massively. Kingston going to send some villagers to wood and also some villagers to gold. And still trying to get every little bit of food here. And still Sebastian is trying to annoy with his scout. He would gladly take this scout attacking his scout if that's what it took. Just to, for this deer to not go in. <laughs> Again, he's so annoying, dude. <laughs> I mean, I have to respect him. I actually, Sebastian, both of these players, I feel, played a great role in me improving over the last six months because of how... Their styles are Sebastian very aggressive, at Kingston very uh, very meta oriented. 
but like God, Sebastian and I have history, man. <laughs> Uh, don't want to face up against him on a tilt streak. All right, so wouldn't it make sense to just tower here? Like, man-at-arms here and then tower behind. I think that's the play. Um, Will be three militia. No more. He's just now going to gold. He will not be able to afford more. He honestly doesn't have the best food eco either. Here he comes. Now, do you possibly work your strategy around taking out the Grajara mill? That could be part of it, too. If you take the, sh the sheep away from Grajara's, it could be really strong. And you could tell he was hoping to do damage here. I think he saw the walls here and said, shoot, I can't do damage. And now he sees this. And look, he gets so close to the TC, he doesn't care. And yeah, he says, I'm going to attack the mill. Now, from Kingston's perspective, Kingston is paranoid about a tower here. He checks, he doesn't see a tower, but what he also doesn't see is an archery range. Scouts attacking. Now, all oh, unfortunate for Kingston, isn't it? Because he wants to know if there's a follow-up archery range or whatever. But this is all proper scouting, but it's just he just doesn't have a clue. The villagers are actually here anyways. And the archer range is over here, and this is going to be wild. No eco upgrades for Sebastian. Tower should go up. Okay, so what do you do now if you're Kingston? I think you have to just run. You have no choice. You hope that one villager distracts for the rest of the villagers. And then if you're Sebastian, you wait until they run, and you pounce. That's precisely what he's done. He's going to hit the camel. Ugh. Trying his best to kill. Has to micro. The archer's here. Archer v. Archer. Man, Kingston, impressive. And he does have the other woodline here as well. This is something that Sebastian has seen. He's just going to place a house there. Barry's still protected. And keep an eye on the range unit numbers because that's kind of the most important thing right now. Obviously, the men at arms are still there. But they're countered by archers. And this is a really good fight. Really good fight right here. At least to start for Kingston. Okay, Sebastian. Man, they pay attention to every little unit. Look at that guys are micro nerds like i said i i really have struggled against these two because of how aggressive they are uh they, they're able to execute so well and have so much focus on the micro the downside i would say particularly for sebastian where he has had to improve is just the macro the, having good economy and you've got to think that at least right now you favor the grajaras with the economy because they at least they've had the the uh a trickle of income here, but you might lose this access to this area if you're Kingston. Kingston runs away with this villager. And Kingston is still hoping to get more range units out right now. All right. I mean, imagine an army being on the front of your base all the time. Bulgarian blacksmith upgrades research faster. They're also cheaper. Sebastian using that. Mm. I I would just. I would never want to give up my mill. That's 800 food that's in there. Now, it's probably brought him over 800 already, but can you imagine if that goes over to the enemy? Is this going to be one of the rare times the Gajara player loses their sheep? I, the only other time I saw this was in the uh, game between Dragonstar and Barlts in Titans League. Look, that villager is coming out to repair. I guarantee it. And you could just tell Sebastian's so torn. He's like, I need to fight. But I also need to take out the mill. I would say use the man-at-arms and scout. Yeah, there you go. And here we wait for it. God, this micro is so good. It's so good. It's so close. The villagers arrived. No. Take it fast. Take it. it. Now, I'm just fixated on the mill. I'm not fixated on the army micro, which is what they're focused on. Obviously, if you kill the army, then... You're going to take the mill anyway, so what you don't want to do is sacrifice. <laughs> you don't want to sacrifice the army just to get the these things that could be taken back. But what in the world is this, man? It's a, it's a llama heist, a llama trade. You get four llamas, I get four llamas. Is that, is that what they're doing now? Meanwhile, the micro continues. And the micro has been really good for both players. Again, it's just the difference maker has probably been the man-at-arms. It's 10 to 8 KD. Four llamas here, four llamas here. 
This eco is very strong for Sebastian, though, comparatively. I think his food eco should be better. And he might actually be able to take these llamas. Uh, nope, can't get the llamas. The llamas are going to go. Wait, 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 wait. Llama, llama. <laughs> llamas getting, are getting killed. You can kill someone's llamas if they are still their color, but they only stay their color if they have units next to it. And oh god, where are you going with the llamas? <laughs> Quick, make a dock, make a transport ship, send it to the corner. <laughs> oh my god, wait, 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 wait. Does he look for the llamas? He finds the llamas! So the man at arms and the skirms have moved over here. I guess you can only run so far. And guys, he made a new mill. Now listen, we we talk about <laughs> we talk about <laughs> the uh, the players and their micro and the units and the death and the destruction, but we so rarely talk about the lives of the llamas, right? These poor llamas are grieving. Oh, another one of their friends. Oh, man. Another one of their friends dies. All because of the greedy humans wanting to win their wars. Jeez, man. God, what is this game? This game is ridiculous. And we have Sebastian coming over here now. And he wants to make a tower. Now, he has no army support. In the end, I mean, very close game. I would love to check the resources collected. So it's very close, just like I had stated. Llamas are back in the mill. There's only four of them now. But there's another, there's another llama. Okay. And let's see if Kingston notices this. So Kingston does notice this, but Sebastian trying to... Oh, he doesn't have this down. He's trying to get full walls around it. And oh, that's so frustrating for him. One palisade wall away from being able to complete what would have been a perfect tower. And now he's rushing it down as he should. Now all the army is going to come over. We have scouts for Sebastian. And there's plenty of weak skirmishers in there. So the scout play is great. And actually this distraction pulls Kingston into an awkward spot. Let's go, man. Let's go. This is a great game. You can also see the hunger. The hunger in their play is just so obvious right now. Spearman comes out. Skirms uh, missing initially. But they take out the Spearman. The tower is actually up. So some villagers have died over here. 21 to 19 KD. Actually, do have a late dock here for Sebastian so he can get a bit of fish. And now the llamas are possibly in jeopardy again. At least the shepherds, I guess you could consider them the ones who control the llamas. How did that villager not die? I don't know how that villager's not dead, but this guy's gonna gonna die. Um, the eco KD is four to three. The KD in total is twenty three to nineteen. The resources for Kingston somehow so high can't help but feel like the hundreds of food he brought in from the dock has helped there. Thing is, though, we could easily see the army composition from Sebastian kill his opponent in this game. And look at that. Sebastian thought about a tower, saw the archers, has to bring his army over. Now he goes. Archers backed away because the army's arriving. And there goes Kingston to Castle Age. Market, market time for Sebastian. If he can float the wood for the market, he needs to buy some food. Rushing to Castle Age could mean so many good things here for him. And look at the sneaky move from Kingston. He actually looped his archers the whole way around to the other side of his walls. And he will kill that villager. And now the skirms will have to come over. And now the tower could probably still go up. The scouts do have armor right now. So they should be very good against the range units. And oh my god, the pullback. These guys are playing out of their minds right now. This is insane. They're so quick. Pull back again. Nope, nope, nope. Your friends are coming now. It'd be a beautiful tower. That tower is going to complete. Whether Kingston micros or not, that tower is going to complete. And now, this is the second time Kingston has had to place a lumber camp on these tiny little nuggets. Normally, I associate nuggets with a very positive thing. I'm a big fan of chicken nuggets. Not positive in this case. Double stable for Kingston. More villagers die. And blue. Utilizing the Bulgarian strength very, very... Nicely here this game. Love the amount of blacksmith upgrades he went for. Love how he went aggressive early with the man at arms. And now I, I guess it's going to be camels and maybe shravamshas. Also, speaking of strengths, the fact that you can make camels in feudal age with Gurjaras is not talked about a lot. 
And how helpful is that? You get ahead of the game here. And so now these are camel riders. And that's a very nice tool to have up against scouts and skirms. So I'm thinking maybe a Krepos drop for Sebastian. But he also has to have an answer to defend himself at home if any camels come over. Not the best rating unit ever, but still, I mean, it's something. And I think that's why Sebastian is now making spears. He's really concerned about that. Active over here next to a lumber camp. Active over here with the scouts. Was able to force Kingston's archers home. And we have a TC instantly. Not instantly, sorry, for Kingston. I guess he's been up for a while. And he's just trying to take this tower out. Okay. So town center now for Sebastian as well. These skirmishers uh, found a weak villager. Somehow he checked. Found a weak villager. He might actually get this kill as well. Great job from him. In the end, he's probably going to lose his skirm, so he wants as many kills as possible, and he finds the archers. Oh, he found another weak vill, but I imagine he's not going to get that one. Knights are now coming towards that tower, right? But you can't be anywhere close to this because of the camels now, and the camels do 50% more bonus damage. And so somehow, after this crazy game from Sebastian, with less idle TC time, more eco kills, more overall kills, we have arrived at a point... Or yet again, we were talking about just how good this Gurjara civilization is with their options and what they're able to achieve. But the Knights also have lots of upgrades. They do have plus two attack. And I, I, maybe we see the villagers come forward for a Krepos drop. Sebastian just attacks with no hesitation. Sometimes you'd think he might need to hesitate more, but he doesn't care. If they required an upgrade to Camel Riders, that would actually be a nerf in many situations. Interesting, Robo. Interesting thought. I, I personally like the idea that you can make camels an age earlier. I just think 50% more bonus damage combined with everything else about the Gurjars is a bit is a bit much. But you know what else is a bit much? Pikemen and knights, full attack, and here we go. Pikemen's not in just yet, but Sebastian knows that this might get worse for him, and then he needs to force the fights, and he goes in here with the fight. He's had so much aggression and control this game. What Atacama's about... Man, he's forced Kingston off of his gold. Now, Kingston's correctly making crossbows to counter the pikemen now. So, camel and crossbow is the correct move. And I do feel as though it could ease... With the 50% extra bonus damage. If he didn't have that, I'm not so sure. But if he takes the fights appropriately, camel, crossbow wins. Now, you got scouts that are going to be around. You're going to have a crepost that could come up. These guys are doing so many important things here. Let's see if Kingston can actually stop the Krepos. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, there it is. What do you choose? Do you choose the army or do you choose the Vils? I feel like you've got to send more Vils. But you do make your opponent choose, like I said. And the Knights are focusing the crossbows. There's still some pikemen. There's not many more Knights, though. There's not many more pikes. This is at 50%. The Camels are chewing the Knights. Sebastian! Sebastian, he's sending everything, guys. Had he sent 10 initially, I think he would have gotten it up. The sieve, man. And the play from Kingston has been amazing. I still think this Krepos goes up, though. And what a position this is going to be in. Uh, uh, 99, he's up. So now, villagers have to die. Camels have to die. Crossbows have to die. So many things will die. Town Center here for Kingston. He's concerned about the wood control. And, you know, in the end, the Eco KD is 14 to 14. This has been incredible. This is a ridiculous game. I'm loving this. Also, these scouts, I don't even think he's controlling them right now. But if those scouts... Oh, oh, oh! He knew the villagers had to run somewhere. And I think in his mind, he thinks, okay, he's taking gold here. Now, you could drop the crep post here. But if he has army, that's that's kind of tough. So I would also maybe like to see a Krepost here. Because you could always make another one. Also love how active the scouts have been. Kingston got a counterattack in at the same time, if you're wondering why he wasn't reacting. He killed some vills with camels. The house walls are there from Sebastian. The scouts have delayed the monastery, though. The villagers are on the way. And they are going to drop the Krepost right where I said would be potentially a risk. Right in Kingston's face. 
Oh god, there was an overchop here. Camels, though, are very weak. Armies needed here. And the GG is called. It was going to work. Oh my god, what a crazy game. From the llama theft to the non-stop aggression and and defense from Kingston. I mean, his defense was so so crazy. What a game. I think what's impressive about Kingston is how well he macros while being under pressure. Because that castle time, I know we could credit some to the fish and, and the llamas or whatever. But his castle time being that fast is just insane. I would just completely crumble. My eco would be a mess and there's no way I'm ever in castle age. But uh, this is why I'm so excited about this whole concept. Because you guys might not have never heard. You guys might not have ever heard against these players. Unless I brought them up or unless I found a recorded game and said, hey, this is really cool, which I've done with both, by the way, in the past on YouTube. But it's actually, you know, a format for them to compete. And and who knows what happened in the rest of that series. I might need to look that up. I think Kingston probably would go for a home map of Arena and win that uh, because I did get a tease on that. I heard it was Koomans and Bohemians, and Kingston's a good Arena player. But fantastic game there. Um, I unfortunately have had a really, really, really long day. Uh, actually, it's been a long week. Uh, just been working a lot, and so I'm gonna take the opportunity to not to have another eight to ten hour day of casting TTL games. But I hope people enjoyed that individual game, and I will definitely, I would suggest paying attention to the playlist from Titans League, where I'll talk a bit about the results, which we're actually about to record right after this. But yeah, that was crazy. You know, I I've seen it become a little bit more of a theme. Where you can, if you're aggressive enough, you can get away without eco upgrades. If you think of like Battle of Africa on Colosseum, I don't know if this rings a bell for anyone, but there's build orders that people had designed to be so aggressive that getting eco upgrades is punished. And so here, obviously, he got it later, but his opening was so fast and he had so much army and so many blacksmith upgrades. It's actually not really achievable if you also invest into the long term with your eco upgrades. And I think it suited the map. I think it suited the Bulgarians. I also think it suited how you want to play against the Grajaras because we had the Llama Heist and everything. I Sorry, by the way, for anyone who watches this on YouTube for soaking you in with some Llama clickbait, but... <laughs> when, when else are you going to use Llama clickbait? I have to try Llama clickbait. That was awesome. And still, he ended up with five llamas in the end. Rip to the other three. 